Hey everyone! Today for our reading mini lesson, we are going to be learning about how we can teach someone about the nonfiction book that we have read. So all week we've been working with our kangaroo book, so now is the time for you to share it with someone. So I want you to watch this video, learn how to teach it to somebody, and then go and tell someone about the book that we've been working on all week. Let's go ahead and get started! Alright guys, so let's see if I can get that in the frame a little bit. There we go. All right, so I've got went ahead and labeled our anchor chart teaching tips. So I'm going to give you four main tips on how to teach someone a new subject based on a book you've read. So let's just jump right into it. The first thing that we need to do is tell the main idea and give supporting details. So in this book, the main idea, of course, duh, is kangaroos. But what is the main idea? We've talked about this in a previous lesson. Do you remember? Exactly. The main idea is how kangaroos survive and how they live. So if I was teaching this to someone, I would say the book Amazing Animals Kangaroos is about how kangaroos survive and live in the wild. Then I would give a supporting detail or maybe a couple. I could say they travel in groups called mobs. They take care of their babies called joeys. They eat mostly plants. They live in Australia. Any supporting detail that tells how kangaroos live is what I would say first. Your number two tip is use an explaining voice. When I say use an explaining voice, this means you've got to sound like you know what you're talking about. If I'm giving a presentation about this book and I'm saying, oh, well, kangaroos, I think that they live in the United States. Do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? Uh-uh. You need to make your voice explaining know what you're talking about and be confident in it. So when you're saying this book is about how kangaroos live and survive in the wild, see how sure of myself I sounded? Make sure that you're using that explaining voice when you're explaining it to someone else. Number four is use hand gestures. This is something Ms. Oz does all the time. I can't help it. But I move my hands a lot when I talk. So when I'm saying something really important, I may hold my hands out like this. Or I may give a thumbs up. Or if I'm talking about a lot of things, I may go like this. But using those little hand gestures to really help you see I'm doing one right now to really emphasize my point can help get your point across in the book. And the final... Oh, that was supposed to be number three. Whoops! out of order. Number four, can't really see that. I'm going to say point to the text features. We've been talking about those text features all week, so use them to help you when you're explaining the main idea and the supporting supporting detail, sorry. So if I was saying, showing this book to someone, if I was teaching someone about this nonfiction book, I would say the main idea. This book is about kangaroos and how they live in the wild. See how I use the main idea? And I use my explaining voice as well as hand gestures. Now I'm gonna add those supporting details. So let me open up to the book. <laughs> so I'm gonna say, Kangaroos live mostly in Australia. They eat plants. They have babies called joeys. And they live in large groups called mobs to help keep them safe. You can see in this photograph right here, this kangaroo mob is looking out for danger. So see how I'm pointing to the different text features, the bulleted, or excuse me, the bolded words, the captions, the glossary, the photographs, to make sure that my 
the person I'm explaining this to can follow along. So now because you don't have a physical copy of the book with you, I'm gonna go ahead and show you each page so that you can pause the video when you're pointing out things and different text features when you're explaining it to someone. So remember, when we're teaching someone a subject of a nonfiction book, we wanna tell them the main idea and give them supporting details. You wanna use an explaining voice. I totally spelled that wrong, that's embarrassing, Miss Oss. Explaining voice. There we go. Use hand gestures and point to the text features. So I'm going to go ahead and show us the book now, just so you can pause on the page that you would like to show somebody. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy teaching someone in your family about this nonfiction text about kangaroos, and you'll definitely have to let me know how it goes. See you guys in the next lesson. Bye.